My name is Emil Agistam, and the work that I will present today is uh, uh, performed together by myself and Professor Jens Nielsen, Dr. Andreas Andersson, and Dr. Martin Lee. And what we'll discuss today is multi-objective design optimization of transition zone between different railway track forms. So before we begin, I would like to give you a brief motivation about why the work that we do is important. So in railway lines, different types of transition zones are occurring frequently. And the tracheometry uh, in transition zones usually degrades faster than in other parts of the track, which implies that uh, extensive maintenance work is usually associated with transition zones. So a key question here is how shall a transition zone be designed for optimal performance? And what we are outlining today will hopefully at least partially uh, give an answer to this question. So we will develop a, a numerical tool that can be used when transition zones are designed. And we can use this numerical tool for uh, determining key parameters for transition zones. It can be used to analyze influences of different imperfections and it can be used as a complement to physical standard and existing standards, um, and also guidelines when requirements for the vehicle and uh, track are determined. So, a brief introduction. Uh, transition zone between slab track on a bridge and ballot track on an embankment is something that we will analyze in this paper now. And the vehicle track interaction model that we are using in order to simulate this uh, was originally developed by uh, Nielsen and Egeland and also recently extended to the slab track context. And it is based on finite element models and uh, a complex valued models of position technique to reduce the computational cost. So as to the assumptions within the model, so all parts in the model that are explicitly modeled with finite elements are modeled as one-dimensional rail Timoshenko beam elements. And the uh, Foundation is in this uh, study modeled uh, as a Winkler foundation, whereas the bridge is assumed to be significantly stiffer than the embankment and therefore, yes, modeled as a bridge, uh, as a rigid structure. Uh, moreover, we assume that we have symmetrically, load, uh, symmetrically distributed loads between the two rails, which implies that it, we can apply symmetry condition and yes, consider one rail and half of this uh, panel and sleepers. And we'll just consider vibration in the vertical direction. And the vehicle is modeled as a multi-body system. And as to the contact between the wheel and rail, we use a nonlinear Hertzian contact theory, which, for example, allows for loss of contact. And we are not considering any rail irregularities in the optimization procedure. So here is something strange with the graphics. Uh, but. Uh, we want to analyze a transition zone between a slab track on a bridge and ballast track on an embankment, as I've said before. And we want to investigate how different design variables affect crucial track responses. And with the design variable, it can be, uh, for example, the stiffness of the rail pads or the thickness of the roadbed or dimensions of the sleeper or sleeper spacings or foundation conditions and so on. So there's a lot of things that you can change within a transition zone to, in order to make it better. So we want to uh, see how we can change different things in transition zones in order to see how it affects different uh, track and vehicle responses. So in this study, we are considering three different objective functions that we want to minimize. So we are trying to, what we want to minimize the maximum wheel rate contact force at any of the wheel set. We want to minimize the maximum pressure between sleeper, panel, and foundation. And we want to minimize the maximum vertical boogie acceleration. So there are three objective functions, which impl implies that the optimization problem will be of multi-objective type. And the design variables uh, consist of uh, 40 uh, rail pads, the stiffness of 40 rail pads, and 20 sleeper spacings that are collected in stacks of five. And uh, so in the figure here, uh, I'm sorry for the poor quality, I don't know why we have that, but uh, you can see, or you should at least see, that there are five diamonds here and another five diamonds. So uh, the first five uh, rail pads must have the same stiffness value and the next five have the same values and so on. And the reason that we constrain the problem in this fashion is for two reasons. First of all, uh, it would not be a practically relevant design to have 40 different stiffness values of the rail pads 
and uh, 20 different sleeper spacings. And the other reason is that we will uh, increase, uh, increase the convergence rate of the genetic algorithm that we will employ later on by just using 12 design variables compared to 60 as it would be if we, they would be independent of each other. So, uh, in order to solve this problem now, we use a stochastic optimization methodology, uh, a genetic algorithm called the non-dominated sorting genetic algorithm, which was developed by David Alt. And if we now press play here, uh, you will see how the optimization procedure works. So you can see when the algorithm is start, we will strive towards smaller boog accelerations, smaller contact forces, and smaller pressures here. Um, so the algorithm works more or less like this, that we have a starting population, in this case 200 individuals. So we randomly select 200 different distributions of our design variables, and for each distribution of the design variables, we calculate the objective functions. And of course, some of them will be better than another one, and then we apply this genetic algorithm and let it run. So it, it may be hard to see in 3D, so here is a 2D scheme where we are just considering the pressure and the contact force, and we are comparing it with a nominal track where we have not optimized anything. So you can see that uh, if you now press this button, one more to the right. So here we have the final front. So you can see that they are quite correlated to each other. So here you have to use your engineering judgment to determine which solution that you shall have. So from the final iteration in the genetic algorithm, we can calculate the so-called non-dominated front. And the non-dominated front is the set of optimal solutions where no solution outperforms another solution in terms of all objective functions. And you can see that there are three different kinds of point clusters here, and that uh, is for three different traffic conditions. So we have, considering, uh, we have considered ballasted track to slab track, that running direction, and uh, slab track to ballasted track, and both running directions. So we use first the one, one of the directions and then the other one and take the maximum values. So the take home message from this slide is that you can see that distributions are quite similar for all traffic conditions, which implies that we don't have to use separate tr transition zones for separate uh, traffic conditions. And if we now take this 3D figure and plot it in three different 2D views, and it's the same 3D figure here, uh, uh, you can, and I've also chosen to these black lines here indicate the responses far away from the transition zone. So in particular here for the pressure, you can see that the pressure is very close uh, to the black line here, which implies that the pressure in the transition zone is close to the pressure far away from the transition zone. So here is the design variables that optimized uh, the uh, responses that we considered. So um, you can see that the stiffness of the rail pads is a bit higher when we have optimized with respect to the uh, foundation load or the foundation pressure. Um, while they are quite similar if we optimize with respect to contact force or boog acceleration. If we now look on some uh, uh, responses here in the time domain or uh, the time history, we are comparing the nominal transition zone and the optimized transition zone in terms of the wheel rate contact force of the leading wheel set when we are considering both directions of travel. So, of course, since we have an inherent stiffness gradient here uh, for the nominal transition zone when we are going uh, from a slab track to a ballasted track, we will get increased dynamic loads in, in the vicinity of uh, the transition. But when we, when we have minimized this maximum value here, you can see that uh, these values are reduced. And a similar figure, but if we look at the case when we uh, are considering the maximum pressure on the foundation. So in this figure, you, we are uh, showing the maximum pressure uh, as a function of the longitudinal track position. So in the objective functions, we are using the maximum value uh, of all these lateral track positions. So for the nominal track, you can see that the, the first sleeper here, if we go from slab track to ballast track, is exposed to higher pressures. But when we have minimized the maximum value, as in the optimized transition zone here, you can see that it is actually the, the pressure far away from the transition zone that uh, is constraining the solution. 
So this pressure could, you, could be reduced by uh, changing the dimension of the sleepers, for example. But uh, as soon as you would introduce the nominal dimension of the sleepers, the pressure will go up again. Similar figure, but for the uh, vertical book acceleration, uh, when we are considering both directions of travel, for the nominal transition zone, it's up to 0.5 meter per second square, whereas for the optimized transition zones, we are down to uh, 0.15, more or less. So as to the conclusions and an outlook, we have developed a simulation environment for transition zones between different railway track forms, and we're using this genetic algorithm to solve the associated multi-objective optimization problem. And we have seen that we get similar non-dominated fronts for all the traffic conditions that we considered, which implies that we can use the same transition zone for both uh, direction of travel. And we've also seen that the magnitudes of the optimized dynamic loads are close to the dynamic loads far away from the transition zone. And as the future extension now, we can, of course, include additional objective functions and design variables. What is important to keep in mind is that if we introduce even more and not changing, then the convergence speed will be uh, slower with the genetic algorithm. And you have to also use engineering judgment to determine which is the most important uh, track and vehicle responses for the performance of transition zones. And finally, we can also extend our model, which is not done now, uh, and include the influence of uh, auxiliary rails and transition slab and undersleeper pads, for example. And with that, I would like to uh, conclude and thank you for your attention.